announcements. You remember Luke and Aaron, they're preaching up at Brother Mathis's Cornerstone Baptist Church in Shelby tonight. Went at Revival and saw him up there, and he's got laryngitis, so he is healed up from that COVID. Thank the Lord for that, but he's lost his voice in the meantime. So they're preaching for him and singing tonight, so pray for them and traveling grace, traveling through that rain. It's been raining on them up there, amen. Good to see you tonight, amen. Uh, also, tomorrow night at 5 o'clock, anybody's interested, we'll be going up to the revival at New Testament up in Kannapolis. Amen. It's been a great meeting so far. They've been saying, I haven't been up yet, but I know the youth's been up there. Y'all went last night, right? And Brother Bobby Utley's grandson got saved. They said him and Miss Memory had a shouting time on that, so I bet so, and I would too. But that's great news. It's been a good meeting, they say. Uh, tomorrow night, we'll be leaving at 5 if anybody's interested, and then Friday... Brother John's going to drive the big bus up there. So we try to load up the big bus. So if some of you don't want to ride on the 15-passenger van, it's easy to step up on that big bus. And So we're going to take John out on his first ride and see if he's willing to drive us to camp or not. We'll try him on a short one. If this won't work, we'll be getting another camp dress driver. Amen? But we kind of limited it down. We had to just take what we got. Amen? Kind of like Miss Lynette did when she married him. She was taking what she gets. You know what I mean? It is what it is, amen. No, I'm picking, amen. Appreciate Brother John volunteering to drive, so don't forget about that, amen. Also, amen, anybody, anybody that would like to, we need a volunteer to change the, the blades on the church more. Amen. They are shot, they said, so we need to change them out. Anybody interested, please let me know after church, and we'll make arrangements to get them and get you to get however we need to do it. So anybody want to do that job? Amen. Ain't but two bolts. You pull them out and take them out. Amen. You got to get up under and jack it up, whatever. So anybody interested? Genesis 15. Amen. Genesis 15. Traveling through the book of Genesis. Amen. Genesis chapter 15. I think that's all the announcements that I could think of. Genesis 15. There is 21 verses here. We'll read the whole chapter, and we'll look at the first six verses tonight. We're going to make more of an a application of spiritual application tonight. We'll be getting into some doctrinal aspects of this thing a little bit later. And there is a lot here in Genesis chapter 15. Now, we've seen the life of Abram as he's left Ur of the Chaldees, called out by God, left with that partial obedience with his father and Lot. And he went forth and went out there and had a little lapse where he went down to Egypt and made some mistakes down there, and God bought him up out of there. The whole time, this boy's never lost his communication with God, praying and talking to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let me get this mic on. Amen. That better. Appreciate that. Amen. And so Abram has journeyed up and down. Now he's, uh, Lot's made his way and separated from Abram, and he's went down to Sodom and Gomorrah, where there were, people were uh, uh, wicked sinners exceedingly, the Bible said. An awful place, a place where God's people got no business dwelling, but Lot went there anyhow. According to the book of Peter, he vexed his righteous soul, and anybody that's saved that try to lives in the world, it's going to be a miserable life. If you can go out there and live in the world and you're saved and you're not miserable, or if you say you're saved and not miserable, there's something wrong. Amen. A child of God is not going to fit in in this world. It might be, like the Bible says, pleasure in sin for a season, but that spirit and that soul is going to be uh, uh, just vexed out there in this old world. And so Lot went that way, and then this war broke out, and Lot got taken captive, and Abraham heard about it, and Abraham went to bat for Lot. Just like any godly child of God to do, if another child of God gets in danger, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one. Considering thine own self, lest thou also be tempted. So Abraham went out to bat for Lot and brought him back, and as he made his way back, amen, he met Melchizedek in that great uh, uh, sacrifice that was given there where he tied the Melchizedek. And then the king of Sodom tried to lay his riches down on Abram. And Abram said, I'm not going to take it. I want nothing from this old world. I got a God that I trust, and I'm going to keep serving him. And I don't need the world's riches. And so now that brings us up to chapter 15, verse number 1. After these things. So that's connecting chapter 15 with chapter 14 in the events of that war and that uh, offer of the king of Sodom and his riches to Lot and the meeting with Melchizedek that Abram had. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, 
What will thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the servant of mine house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And so Lot's been told by God that God's going to give him a seed. And we know that seed is the stars of heaven and the sand by the seashore. God's promised the promised seed through Abraham, which would be the seed and the loins for the Lord Jesus Christ to come. But as at this time, Abram has no child. He's childless. And he said, the only guy I got in my house is this Eleazar, the steward of Damascus. In verse 3, and Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in mine house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, this Eleazar, but, that, but, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto, thee, unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed the Lord, believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me an heifer of three years old and a she-goat and of three years old and a ram of three years old and a turtle dove and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these and divided them in the, mid, in the midst, and laid each piece one against another, but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down unto the carcasses, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, and a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety, that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy father in peace, and thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come thither, hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates, the Canaanites and the uh, Canazites and the Cadmonites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Raphims and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Gergashites and the Jebusites. Let us pray. Brother Jeff Thomas, how about pray for us and Lord bless tonight. Man, we try to take a theme out of each chapter and run that theme and thought as we've studied the book here. And if you was looking for a theme in chapter 15, I call it Abram's Assurance. Abram's Assurance. In this chapter, God gives Abram assurance. We'll see tonight in verse 1 through 6, he gives him assurance through the seeds as, uh, his seed as the stars of heaven. In verse 7 through 17, we'll see that he gives assurance from the seed substance. And then in verse 18 through 21, the assurance through the seed sand, which is the land promised that God promised them. So God gives them assurance. He gives them assurance as he sees the stars that are in heaven. He gives them assurance through the substance of the things that they possess. And then he gives them the assurance that that land, that sand, will be theirs. The word assurance is found seven times in your King James Bible. I want to run you two references. Hold your place here in Genesis 15. Look in uh, Isaiah 32. Assurance. 
Assurance is a great thing from God, and we need more of it. It's that thing that gives us a peace of mind, a peace in our spirit, amen, some tranquility, some uh, hope from the Lord. Thank God God offers peace. And we find peace in the pages of this word, where his word of God, and that peace comes with assurance. And God wants us to be assured of things. That's where you get the word assurance. He wants us to know that what God said will come to pass. And Abram needs some assurance here. He's been battling, he's been up and down, he's been in and out, he's been down in Egypt, he's been out of Ur of the Chaldees, he's been over here building altars, he's been over there worshiping God, he's been fighting battles, he's been having a, a strife with his uh, 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 nephew, he's been having a uh, uh, death of his father, and God shows up to him in chapter 15 with some assurance in his heart. And every once in a while we all need a little bit of a touch from the Lord to reassure us that, listen, everything's going to be all right. I know you're battling. I know you're going through struggles. I know you've been through deaths. I know there's been strife with God's people. I know there's been battles that you've been facing. I know there's been times where you've been on the mountain and you've been in the valley. Hey, but God is faithful to his people, amen. And sometimes we need that assurance from God. And I think that's exactly what God's doing to Abraham here in chapter 15 is he's showing up to Abram and saying, son, I'm your father, you're my child, and everything's going to be okay. Assurance. Isaiah 32, look in verse 17. The Bible says, And the work of righteousness shall be what? Peace. You know what, you know what comes when you live right? Peace. You know why a lot of people don't have peace in their heart? They're not living right. Righteousness. He says in verse 17, And the work of righteousness shall be peace. Now look at this. And the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. Do you know why a lot of people lose their assurance? Because they live unrighteous. Hey, living right with God brings assurance to your heart. You know when you battle whether you're saved or lost is when you're not living right? When you're living right and you're living righteous, which means to live right before God, and God made us righteous in his blood, but when we live out that righteousness, it comes with peace, and the fruit of that peace is assurance. Hey, I know I'm a child of God. It's when I slip up and do things I shouldn't do is when the, the devil jumps on your shoulder and says, hey, you think you're saved? You can't be saved living like that. You can't be a child of God. And you begin to lose that assurance by listening to the voice of the devil because you're not living the way that you should. That's what he's saying in that verse. Verse 17, the work of righteousness shall be peace and the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance Forever, We need that assurance. Look in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Assurance. Well, chapter 1, excuse me. We'll look at two references here of that word. Seven times it's found in your Bible. You know seven is the number of completion. And boy, if we're ever going to be complete in our lives, we need to be assured of God. Amen. Hey, somebody said that one, the next best thing to know after you're saved is to know that you can't lose it. Amen. I know God's saved me and I know what God does. He doeth forever. Amen. And to know that you're saved and the assurance of it, amen, gives us that ability to go forward for God. You know what God wants us to do? Be assured that God's on your side. Hey, God's got everything in control and it's all going to be okay no matter what you're facing in your life. Abram had been facing a lot of things, but God's coming with assurance and saying, hey, son, everything's going to be all right. Assurance. First Thessalonians chapter 1, look in verse 5. You find those five T, right? First Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus. Those books that begin with T, they're all grouped together. First Thessalonians 1, 5, the Bible says this. For our gospel, Paul talking about the gospel that came to the people of Thessalonica at that church, came not unto you in word only. Thank God it don't just come in word, but thank God it comes in word. Amen. It came not unto uh, you in word only, but also in power. The gospel comes with power, look, and in the Holy Ghost and with much, what? Assurance. As ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. The gospel, what's the gospel? The gospel in the context here is how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. The gospel, the good news is that God died for sinners. He took our place. He became our sin that we could become righteous before him. And that gospel came with what? Power, Holy Ghost, and what? 
assurance. Hey, power to save your soul, Holy Ghost to help you live it, and assurance to know you got it. That's what you need when you get saved. I need that power of God, and it comes in when you get saved. If any man have not the Spirit of God, he's none of his. When you get saved, the Spirit of God moves in. That power to perform, to live, the Holy Ghost is there, and assurance to knowing that I am safe in the arms of God. Now, God's coming to Abram here with some assurance. Look back in Genesis 15. It's not the assurance of salvation. Abraham had met God when he left Ur of the Chaldees. But God's given Abraham some assurance today. Even though you're struggling, even though there's been some battles, even though there's been some hardships in your life, the promises I promise to you will come to pass. I'm not going to back up on them once. Hey, a lot of times we begin to wonder, is God going to do what he said? Is God going to come through? You get to look into this old world, look at all the wickedness and the darkness in the day we're living in. And some people begin to wonder, is the Lord going to come back? Is he going to straighten it out? Is he going to fix it? And God's word gives us assurance that yes, he will do what he said he would do. Amen. Hey, God, we need that assurance for victory to go forward for the Lord. So God's coming to Abraham with some assurance. And I'll look at that in these first six verses. Under the thought, the seeds, stars. God tells Abraham to look at the stars, son, and look at what I'm going to do. Put your faith in me. Amen. Hey, look at the first thing he says in verse number one. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision. Amen. Uh, the, there's, there's a lot of first mentions in this passage. And we've seen that as we've studied the book of Genesis. That's the Genesis, the new beginnings, the beginnings, Genesis, where you get the word Genesis, what it means. It's new beginnings. And there's a lot of new beginnings that take place. When God created the heaven and the earth, there's a new beginning for the earth. God created man, put him on earth, there was a new beginning. God made a marriage, that was a, the first one ever mentioned. God gave them children, the first family. It's Genesis, it's new beginnings. In this chapter here, it's no different. We see some things that are the first time they're ever mentioned. And we think that when you talk about first things that are mentioned, I mean first times words that are mentioned. And when you see words that are mentioned for the first time in your King James Bible, it sets a precedence for the meaning of that word. And you know what kind of words God throws out in this chapter to give assurance? Look at this in verse number one. He says in verse number one, he said, Now after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram. Do you know this first time that phrase is mentioned, the word of the Lord came? The word of the Lord came. You find that, that phrase all throughout the Bible, the word of the Lord come. You know what the word of the Lord comes with? The word of the Lord comes with assurance. You know what you're going to get assurance? You're going to get it from that book right there. Look what else he says in that verse in verse 1. Saying, fear not. That's the first time that phrase is mentioned in your Bible. Fear not. Amen. Hey, you know why God wants you not to fear? Because God wants to give you assurance. And when you lose your fear of the things of this whole world and get have fear of God and trust God, there's assurance in our heart. The word of the Lord comes with assurance. Hey, the fear of the Lord brings assurance in our lives. God's trying to give that assurance. Hey, not only do we see that, but look in verse 6. There's another first mention. Verse 6 says, and he believed in the Lord. Do you know it's the first time the word believed is mentioned in your Bible? We've gone through 15 chapters and the word believe hasn't showed up. The phrase, the word of the Lord came, has it showed up? Hey, the phrase, fear not, has it showed up? When I think about these words and I think about it in the context of assurance and peace, that God's going to take care of it, everything's going to be all right. Hey, just believe the word of the Lord and fear not this world and God will give you assurance. What else do we see here? Phrases that were the first time mentioned. The word of the Lord came, fear not, believe. The Bible said in verse 6 again, and he, and he believed in the Lord and he counted. That's the first time the word counted. Amen. Counted unto him for righteousness. That's the first time that word's mentioned. So there's some first time phrases, righteousness. That gives assurance. Remember that? Hey, hey, count it up. Hey, God's going to take care of it. Tally it up. Add it up. Amen. Hey, 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 Ab uh, Abram, when he goes up to offer his son a little bit later on up on, Mount, uh, on the mountain as a sacrifice, he accounted it that God would raise him from the dead. He done tallied it up. He put the facts together, and this was the answer. Amen. Hey, count up the facts. Add it up. It comes to the conclusion that God will be faithful to his people. Amen. Assurance is what we need. We just need to believe. We don't need to fear the world. Word, word, excuse me. We need to let the word of the Lord come into us and speak to us and just believe it. These things bring assurance. Amen. These words are connected with assurance. First of all, I want you to see tonight, there'll be four things I want to look at in this passage. Number one, the divine revelation. It was a divine revelation. You know what we need from God is a divine revelation. You know what you get a divine revelation from? A smoky cloud. 
No, you don't get divine revelation from a smoky cloud. It was a joke. Is anybody paying attention tonight? Amen. You don't get divine revelation out of the baptismal pool. You don't get divine revelation from lightning bolts. You get divine revelation from the Word of God. That, that, that book that God revealed, that book that God's given, if God's going to speak to you, He's going to speak to you by the Word of the Lord. Amen. And God will reveal Himself to us through the pages of the Word of God. We see this divine revelation. Look in verse 1 again. After these things, the word of the Lord came. God showed up. You know what God knew this boy needed? He needed a revelation. He needed me to come to him and reassure him that, hey, son, I'm still here. Everything's going to be all right. After these things, after all the things that Abraham had been to to this point, after the great battle that took place, after he resisted the temptation from the king of Sodom and Gomorrah to take his possessions and worldly goods, after he had offered up his tithes and offers to Melchizedek, and it seems like here he's left there with nothing, but God shows up and said, after these things, boy, I'm still on your side. I'm right there, amen. You ever been in your life where things are going all crazy and you don't understand what's going on? And and after these things, the word of the Lord shows up. It happens kind of like this. You ever been going through hardships in your life and you drag your tail to church service because that's what you ought to do and the man of God opens up the word of God and the word of God begins to bring revelation to your heart and lets you know everything's going to be all right. He ever came in dragging, amen, and thinking, man, how am I going to make it through another one? How am I going to fix this? How, how am I going to make, uh, make something out of my marriage? How am I going to make something out of my youngest? How am I going to handle this financial distress? How am I going to handle what's going on in my life? How am I going to handle the mistakes that I made? And the Word of God comes to you and reveals to you, everything's going to be all right. I'm going to take care of it. Just trust me, amen. Hey, God knows when to show up with a revelation. And God knew Abraham needed one. Amen. God knew Abraham needed it more than he needed it. That's what I found out about God. God knows when I need something more than I know I need it. Amen. He showed up with a divine revelation. The word of the Lord came after these things, after the battle that had taken place, after he had rejected the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah. Look back in chapter 14 there. Just, it might be on the same page. The end of that chapter there. Look in verse four, four, chapter 14, verse 22. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, now the king of Sodom said, hey, take all the goods you want, man. You fought a good battle. I appreciate what you've done. And Abram said unto the king of Sodom, I've lifted up mine hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth. You know what he's saying? I swear to God. I lifted up my hand to God. Hey, God's been good to me. That's what he's trying to tell the king of Sodom. Look what he said in verse 23. That I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latch and that I will not take anything that is thine lest thou should have say, I have made Abram rich. You know what Abram said? I ain't taking nothing from you, king of Sodom. I appreciate the offer, but I've swear to God, I've trusted God. Amen. And he's, he's rejected that, that, that worldly offer from the king of Sodom. He's coming back with not much spoils, just his family and those that went to battle with him. Excuse me. And they brought their way back after these things. The Lord shows up to Abraham and says, hey, here's a word for you, son. I'm going to take care of you. Hey, yes, you ain't got to take nothing from the king of Sodom. I know you maybe was tempted. Maybe something maybe arise in your flesh and said, well, nobody you know. Just take a little something. But he resisted it and said, I swore to God I ain't going to do it. I know you even took a tenth of what you had and then gave it back to Melchizedek and you didn't have much to start with, but you offered up your tithes and offers like you should have and you didn't take nothing from the wall. And God said, son, I know you need something to let you know I'm still on your side no matter what you're going through, amen. Boy, ain't God faithful to do that? I don't know if you can relate to that tonight, amen. Hey, if you can't hold on long, long enough, you'll, it'll, you'll be able to relate to it. There'll be come times in your life where you've resisted the world and you've offered up things to God and you've done everything right and it seems like everything went wrong. Can I get a witness right there? You ever just seem like you've done everything right and you trusted the Lord and you're serving the Lord and then your family's going to bust? And your marriage is going bad? Finances is tearing up and all you've done is serve the Lord? That's Abram here. He's done everything right. He, he swore to God, I ain't taking nothing from him, not even a shoe latch. And I offered up tithes to Melchizedek. And then the Lord comes up and says, Son, I know what's going on in your heart. I know what's going on in your mind. And I've got assurance for you that I'm going to take care of you. Amen. And the word of the Lord came unto him. Amen. It was a divine revelation from God. Hey, every once in a while, we all need a divine visit from God to reassure us that everything's going to be all right. After the rejection, after the battle, the Lord shows up. Amen. Look what the Lord said to him in verse 1 again. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto him, 
it came into Abram in a vision saying, look at the first thing he said, fear not. Now listen, we just read chapter 14, we studied chapter 14. Abraham gathered up them servants, what was it, 318 men that went with him? And they fought all these kings, and he brought back the spoil, brought back Lot. He fought valiantly like a warrior. He fought, amen, to bring him back, delivered Lot from, the king of, from, from those evil kings that were out there, right? Uh, Chattelamer, that was his name, right? And he delivered him from Chattelamer, and he brought him back, and he brought back all the spoils. And Abraham went valiantly, valiantly out there, and he showed no signs of fear at all. Not a lick of signs of fear. Just courageously went forward and fought. And then when he comes back after these things, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying unto Abraham, Fear not. Now, why would God say, Abraham, fear not? Now, here's what I think. It ain't no mystery. God must have knew he was afraid. I mean, why would God come up to Abraham and say, Hey, son, fear not if Abraham's not afraid? What's he afraid of? Well, we know according to chapter 14, he wasn't afraid of Chedalamer. And he wasn't afraid of all those kings that out there. On that. He wasn't afraid of that battle. I mean, he went out there and fought. God didn't go up to him before the fight and say, hey, fear not. God showed up after the fight and said, fear not. Hey, what's Abraham fearing? Hey, something's going on in that boy's heart that him and God knows. And some of times in our lives, we're showing on a good show and we're looking real strong and we fought the fight and there wasn't any fear at that time. But then fear creeps in sometimes when we begin to wander and doubt. And God shows up with a divine revelation and says, Hey, son, fear not. I got this. I got what you need. And God's first words to Abraham was fear not. Somebody said the references to that word fear not or be not afraid is found 365 times in your King James Bible. I didn't count them out and find out. I don't know. But somebody said, if that had to be so, how many days are there in a, in, in, in a year? 365? Do you know God's got enough to conquer our fear every day of the year? There ain't a day shows up God can't conquer it. Now, I don't know if that phrase is so, but that's good preaching, whether it be true or not. Amen. Yeah, somebody said, there ain't much Bible in it, but it's good preaching. Now, it ain't good preaching if it ain't got good Bible in it, by the way. But that's a good joke, you know. But 365 times, that to be, that's, that's not a joke. That's to be said to be true. The, the, that uh, variances of that phrase is found that many times. And God knows that any day in our lives, fear can come out of nowhere, and we need something to conquer that fear. And when God helps us conquer that fear, it comes with assurance. When fear comes in, we lose that assurance. And we're talking about assurance. God showed up and said, fear not. God knows when to show up. Listen to me. This is simple. And what to say when he shows up. Ain't you, ain't you glad of that? Now, you might not know when to show up, and I might not know when to show up, and a lot of times we show up at the wrong time, right? But God knows when to show up, and he knows what to say when he gets there. When God showed up, amen, after that great battle, and you'd have thought Abram was on top of the world, this guy's offered up his tithes to Melchizedek, he's fought oh, Chalalamer and brought back all the spoil, he's rejected the, uh, uh, Sodom's offer of all his riches, and it seems like he's on top of the world, but God knows there's something going on in his heart that nobody else knows. And that's what I know about God. You can come to church with a smile. You can put on a good face and it looks like everything's going good. But God knows what's going on in all of our lives. Now, I'm all for putting on a show, you know. I'm not talking about putting on a show, but I'm talking about, you know, not trying to have a pity party. Not trying to get attention for things that are going on in your life. It's kind of like when a man fasts. He shouldn't put on a sad face and let everybody know I'm fasting. I mean, do it in secret. God knows what you're doing. God rewards you openly, right? And some things you don't need to be just kind of... Some people, they just want to be drama because they like attention. Abram went like that. He didn't want no attention. Man, we read the events here and it's like, dude, dude, dude's on top of the world. Everything's going good. But God knows what's going on in his heart. And when God comes to you, knocks on your door and says, hey, fear not, I'm right here. Hey, hey, drop your facade, lay down your face, amen, on an altar and come to God and let God give you help and assurance that you need. It's a time when we need to quit putting on a show and just be honest before the Lord. God said, hey, Abram, fear not. He must have been afraid. God knew what to say and when to say it. He must have been afraid and God knew it. Amen. And what does the Bible say in Hebrews 13, verse 5 and 6? Amen. Let, let me read it to you. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. Amen. I, I, I feel like I'm about to misquote it, so let me find it here. Hebrews 13, you know it. You'll know it when I see it, amen. I'll probably know it when I see it too. Hebrews 13, 5 says, let, let, let your conversation be without covetousness, right? He wouldn't covet. And be content with such things as you have. 
For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. God ain't going to leave you. God ain't going to forsake you. Look, so that we may boldly say, we're talking about assurance tonight. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Hey, what a great promise in the book of Hebrews. And Abram knew something about that promise before it was ever written when God showed up and said, hey, I'm your helper. I'm going to take care of you, amen. Abraham has received a divine revelation from God. And the first thing he said was, fear not. Look what he says on in verse number one. After these things, at the right moment, at the right time, the Lord came unto Abram in a vision saying, fear not, Abram. Listen, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. <laughs> you know he said? I'm your protection, son. I'm your shield. Hey, kids, we just talked about that endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ and putting on the armor of God last week in Bible school and that shield of faith. God said, I'm your shield. Hey, what's that shield for? To quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, right? Hey, hey, they're going to be shot at you. Abram's being shot at by the fiery darts of the wicked. They're trying to attack his mind. They're trying to attack his uh, assurance. Amen. They're trying to bring fear into his life. And God said, son, I am thy shield. I'll take all the fiery darts. I'll take the beating for you. I'll take it away from you. If you'll just trust me, amen. Comes with a divine revelation. He said, I'm thy shield. And he said, I am thy exceeding great reward. Why would he say that? Well, maybe Abraham had some fear that something's going to slip in. Maybe something's slipping in after the fact. You ever feel like you fought a battle and everything went well, but after the battles when all these things come in in your mind, troubles, did I do right? Did I say it right? What happened there? And so God's coming to Abraham and says, Son, I see, I know. I see the anxiety. I see the fear. I see the trouble. He said, I'm thy exceeding great reward. I wonder when he said, I'm thy exceeding great reward, did he know that Abraham had fear? He must have. He said, fear not. He said, I'm thy shield. He must have knew that something's kind of shooting darts at him. And the Lord also knew that maybe, maybe, you know, when Abraham was so bold, said, I've lifted up my hand to the Lord. I will not take even a sulite from you. But maybe he's thinking, man, maybe I should have took a little bit. Maybe it wouldn't hurt. Maybe if I'd have took it, maybe I wouldn't be in the shape I'm in financially. Maybe that thing's beginning to creep in, and God says, hey, son, I'm thy shield, and I am thy exceeding great reward. I'm richer than the world, son. You trust in me. That's what, the, that's what you need to do. I'm going to take care of my children, amen. Hey, God knows what we need, and God can take care of our needs, amen. He has come to him with this twofold revelation. I am thy shield, the block, the darts of the wicked. I am thy exceeding great reward. Hey, God's riches are greater than the world. Hey, uh, hey, hey uh, uh, Moses knew something about that in Hebrews chapter 11, didn't he? Choosing rather to suffer the afflictions with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Amen. He resisted the riches of this world. He could have had all the riches down at Pharaoh's house, but he resisted those riches for the treasures that are laid up in heaven. Hey, you might have to turn down something on this world, but God's rewards are out of this world. The old saying is the benefits for serving the Lord is out of this world. They're richer. God said, I am your exceeding great reward. Hebrews 11, verse 26 is that verse over there. He, was, he esteemed the riches of God greater than the riches of the world, Moses did. God knows. You know what God knows? God knows when we need a visit from him. Hold your place in Genesis. Look in Psalms 103. Psalms 103. God knows what we need. God knows you. God knows me. God knows me more than I know me. God knows you more than you know you. God knows you more than we know you. God knows when you need a divine revelation from Him and when to show up. That's why it's important to stay in your Bible. The Word of the Lord came unto Him. Read it daily. Show up to where it's preached because God's got what you need and the very time you miss reading it daily and you miss a Bible study or a Sunday morning or a Sunday night service could be the message that God had delivered just for your need. God knows. I've seen it happen too much. Thomas missed it. We've seen that an example in the Bible after the resurrection, right? And all the other disciples were there, and he missed it, and he didn't have no assurance, did he? And a lot of God's people are living with no assurance in their lives because they just won't do what's right by the word of the Lord. Look at this, Psalms 103. Look in verse number 14. You know the verse. Look at the Bible says here. He says, uh, for he knoweth our frame. We're talking about God knowing us. He remembereth that we are what? Dust. God knows our frame. Back in Genesis 15, God knew Abraham's frame. God knew the boy wasn't nothing but dust. He's great Abraham. Yeah, he's just dust. 
He's just an old heathen that come out of earth, a child. He's all he is. Hey, you know what we are? We just sinners saved by grace. God brought us out of our earth, the Chaldees, and put a call in our allies, but there ain't nothing great in us. The only thing great in us is the God that we serve. And God remembers our frames that are nothing but dust. And he knows when to show up with a divine revelation to encourage us to go on. God knows what we need for encouragement. We see the divine revelation. Number two, I see the human response. After there's a divine revelation from God, you've got to respond. We see Abram's response. What's his response? His response is about natural as you can get. Amen. It ain't no fake. It ain't no facade. He's just being honest with God. God showed up to Abraham with his great encouragement to give assurance. Now look in verse 2. Abram's response, the human response. And Abram said, Lord God, what will thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is not mine heir. Not mine heir. Hey, God's come to him and said, Son, I'm your shield. I'm your exceeding great reward. Fear not, son, I'm here. Abraham says, Lord, I understand all that, but uh, I still ain't got that seed you promised me. That child ain't showed up. It's been 10 years, some say, since God made that promise to Abraham when he come out of Ur of the Chaldees, and still God's given him no child. God said his child's going to be like the stars of heaven, going to be like the sand by the seashore. Hey, God's promised him that. And he says, hey, hey, God, listen, listen. I, I know you're the shield. You're the exceeding great reward. You don't want me to fear. You're going to take care of me. But I still ain't got a child. Still don't have a seed. And the only one I got is this Eleazar of Damascus, this Stuart. I just got a servant in my house. I ain't got no child from my own loins. Me and Sarah's had no children, but you promised us. Where's your promise at? Yes, you must shield, you might exceeding great reward, but Lord, just can I just be honest with you? It ain't looking like it. The human response. Do you know what? Now, one time we'll look at it as it goes on, the conversation goes back with him and God. God kind of, you know, throws a little bit at him back and forth, but he really never any strong rebuke to Abraham. He lets Abraham vent and talk. Do you know what God wants you to do? Just be honest with him. God, I know what the book says right there. You're going to never leave me nor forsake me, but right now it's just looking like I'm doing this by myself. Now, what's wrong with being honest with God? You say, preacher, you shouldn't talk to God like that. Hey, God wants you to just be honest. Pull your heart out. You'll be surprised what God will do if you get honest with him. Stop faking it. Hey, God, yeah, I understand shield, reward. Uh, these, uh, man, I find all these promises in the Word of God, but, you know, where's the child at? God, I understand all this stuff, but, hey, my youngest still ain't right with God. God, I understand all this, but my family marriage ain't looking too well. God, I understand all this, but I'm still having doubts with all this peer pressure from the world on me. God, I understand everything you're saying, but hey, the world's creeping in and getting the better hand of me at the moment. Hey, go down there and lay it on an altar and tell God what you feel. Amen. Hey, God knows how to come back with some more divine revelation. God can lift you up out of you. Just be honest with him. Hey, you know what a lot of people do? Instead of getting honest with God, they walk out and throw God out the window and give up. That's the worst thing you can do. Worst thing you can do. Hey, man, we see a human response. Just be honest. Hey, hey, sometimes, you know what? I don't understand. Sometimes I don't have an answer. What's wrong with saying that? I, I, you know, I just don't know. I don't know why that happens. I don't know why you're going through that. Only thing I can rest on is the promise of the Lord. The Lord knows what he's doing. The Lord makes no mistakes. You say, preacher, that's not always a good answer. I need a little bit more than that. But sometimes that's the only answer we got. Let's just be honest. And we know all things work together for the good of them that love God, to them that are called according to His purpose. What a great promise Romans 8, 28 is. And it is a great promise. And a lot of God's people have found a lot of great help out of, that, out of that passage of Scripture. But sometimes you hear that passage and it's like, fall on deaf ears. I understand, but, you know, I just got another report. I just got another call. I just had another doctor visit. The human response. Abram's problem was, hey, 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 hey. Ten years and I've had no child. You know what Abram, Abram's showing here? Man, I'm losing hope. You ever felt like you're losing hope? It can happen. It can happen. Look, look in Matthew 19. Hold your place there in Genesis. Matthew 19. I'm just being honest tonight. We're just looking at, now Abram's just being honest with God. It's good to learn something from a great honest conversation between God and a man. Matthew 19. These conversations went on throughout the Word of God with others. Look at the disciples here in Matthew 19 with the Lord Jesus Christ when he was on earth. Matthew 19. Uh, I think it's verse 27. Matthew 19, 27. 
Yeah. You got it? Then answered Peter. You seeing what I'm looking at? Then answered Peter. Kind of like Abram answered the Lord. Here's Peter answering the Lord. And Abram then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all. And to follow thee, what shall we have therefore? Is that not what Abram's done? He resisted Sodom. He resisted the riches of Sodom. He's went to bat for Lot. He's built altars. He's taught and worked with God. And Peter said, Hey, Lord, we've done it all. What shall we have therefore? Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in, his throne, in the throne of his glory, ye, shall, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that shall be, are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. You know what God said? I'm going to take care of you. That's what he's about to respond back to Abraham. And yeah, I know you haven't died, son, but you rest assured I will keep my promises. And that's what this chapter is about. It's about assurance and giving Abraham back that assurance that God is his shield. God's his exceeding reward. Even though there's no seed at the moment, it's coming when I, just like God said it was going to come. It might not be here now, and you might have been waiting 10 years, Abraham, but you keep holding on. God's going to come through and do what he said he would do. 10 years, he's losing hope. But there is hope. You, you know what I find that in the passage here with Abram? That this great patriarch, listen to me. This ought to bring peace to some of his heart. This great man of God, the friend of God, the Bible called him. Abraham, man left earth of child east. Man probably more spoken of than anybody in the Bible than Jesus Christ. Abraham, Moses. But you know, who spoke more about Abraham and Moses? Not many, right? You know what that guy had? He had doubts. He had struggles. He had times he went out of Egypt. He had times he prayed, times he didn't pray. Times he halfway obeyed the Lord. Times he fully obeyed the Lord. But you know what the end says about in Galatians chapter 3, verse 9 about Abraham? Here's what God said about him. Faithful Abraham. You know what you're saying, preacher? You know what? You look at people, you look at your children, maybe look at yourself sometimes, and they're up and down and in and out, struggling, doing right, praying, not praying, reading, serving, not serving, in and out, up and down, just like Abraham. But in the end, God brought something out of it. There is still hope. Don't lose hope. Don't lose the assurance that God's still going to do something. Hey, hey, Brother Ted, I, 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 I can still see the smile on his face tonight when we made prayer requests about Brother Bobby Utley's son, grandson getting saved. You know what, you know, you know what I, I can see in that smile in his face? That, hey, there's hope for my grandbabies. <laughs> hey, man, I, 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 if you ask him, I believe that's exactly what it was all about. Hey, that's hope for my grandyoungest. That's hope for my granddaughter. Hey, God will still do it. God is still honored. Just keep doing right, amen. There's rewards coming, son. Hey, Abraham's up and down and in and out. Sometimes our youngers are like that. Our marriages are like that. Our lives are like that. But the end result, if you keep plugging along and you keep trusting God, God will make something out of your life. And God said, faithful Abraham. Hey, a man that had struggles up and down. And God said, look how great he was. Listen, if that man like that could have struggles and be up and down, who are we? And sometimes we look at people that go up and down and struggle as they ain't saved. They can't be saved. God never going to do nothing with them. I wonder how many people thought that about Abraham. I mean, look at it. The track record. Went out with his father. He shunned him. Went out and took Lot. Striped between Lot. Going down there, taking Lot down there and there, down to Egypt. And Lot picking up these false gods and doing things he ought not done. Probably got his wife down there. And it was all, all the results of what Abraham did, done. He had his hand in some of that. There was times he built altars and praise, times he was silent when he was down in Egypt, no praying going on, right? Just up and down, in and out, fighting battles, fighting between God's children and fighting between the enemy, you know, doing good, doing bad. But in the end, God brought something great out of that man's life. And if you just keep plugging along, even though there's been struggles in your life, even though you've made mistakes, God can still make something great out of you. And God in the end can say, Galatians 3, 9, faithful Abraham. Hey, Amen. I like that, don't you? It was a human response. God honored it. God honored his up and downs and his faithfulness. God made something out of it. He said, I ain't got nobody but this Eleazar of Damascus. Eleazar means my God is helper. 
Eleazar is that guy we'll look at a little bit bit later on that he sends down there to go get a bride for his son. He's that steward of his house. He's a type of the Holy Ghost. You know what? If you think about it like that, Abraham saying all the guys is Eleazar. All the guys is the Holy Ghost. Man, you got a whole lot more than you think you got, Abraham. We got more than we think we got. Right? Just the Holy Ghost? No, he's more than that. He's God manifesting the flesh. He's God in spirit form in your life. Amen? The Holy Ghost living in you. He said, we see the divine revelation. We see the human response. We see the divine assurance. God comes back with assurance. Even though he says all these things, verse 4, the Bible says, look in Genesis 15, 4, and behold, the word of the Lord came unto him. Just like it did the first time. Here it is again. The word of the Lord came. He's coming back. Abraham's been honest. And the word of the Lord came in him saying, this shall not be thine heir. You know, that's kind of a rebuke. Maybe a wake-up call. Abraham, this is not the heir, son. Abraham said, all the guys is Eliezer. God said, let me tell you something to start with. That ain't the heir. That ain't the guy I promised. That's not the seed. But he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. You're going to have a child. Abraham, you know, it's been 10 years, and by the time he begins to have, before he has the child, him and his wife's over there, she's laughing, doubting God. He's old, and they ain't been with, been with each other in that kind of relationship. They can't have no children, but they doubted God. Is anything too hard for the Lord? No, there's nothing too hard for the Lord. Hey, God will perform his promise, Amen. When it looks like there's no hope and there's all doubt, God comes through. He said, look at verse 5, and he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven. Abraham, he said, that ain't going to be the, Eleazar ain't the one, and I'm going to give you one out of your wounds. And he says, by the way, come here. Come here, son. Look up there. Now, like I, when we went out to Montana, I remember we went out to Montana to get up them high heights. We've been out to Arizona. You get out there, and you get out there with this high elevation. It feels like you can almost touch the stars. Yeah, I guess what I kind of imagine when Abraham went out there and God said, look up there. And it just flooded. The beauty of God and lighting up everywhere. And the Lord says, hey, hey, hey. He's, look. He said he brought him forth and said, look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. Amen. The divine assurance shows up. God shows up to reassure Abram of his promise. Hey, just like I said, I'm going to do it. He'd already promised it to Abraham. Now he's coming to reassure him that I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do. Do you know what we all need sometimes? Just reassurance that God's going to do what he said he's going to do. That's what preaching is. Amen. Hey, that's what revivals are. We have revivals. They have a different preacher. And he just says the same message, just a different mouth. Why? Just to reassure you that, hey, you're doing right. Keep plugging on for God. Amen. Amen. Every once in a while, we all need reassurance from God. Reminding, hey, preacher, and I know that stuff you're saying tonight, but how often are we easily to forget it? And every once in a while, we just need a good old reminder that God's faithful and God's going to do what he said. Just keep plugging along. And there's no telling what God will do in your life. Keep trusting him. He showed up. God said, hey, he told Abraham, listen, he had a new message. He said, I'm the same thing I told you to start with. Check it out. Look at the stars. He reassures him. God corrects him. He said, this shall not be, right? He instructs him, amen. He said, he said this shall not be the heir, but he that shall come forth of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. There's the instructions after the correction and then the encouragement. He says, and he brought him forth and said, look up now. You know what he said? Pick your head up, son. How you going to look up without picking your head up? You know what we need, everyone, need to all do every once in a while? Pick your head up. We all dragging around. That's why somebody said it. Pick your head up. So look up. Brother Brooks says it. Keep looking up. Keep looking up. Amen. He's having struggles right now. Uh, that, that fluid's coming back on him. Brother D said he talked to him the other day. Hey, you know what the saying is? Just keep looking up. Keep looking up. You know what Brother Brooks needs to hear? I hope he's watching tonight. He probably is. He's faithful to watch. Hey, keep looking up, brother. Keep going what you said, amen. I know you know it, but keep looking up. God's faithful. God will come through. Somebody, I got another bad report. I got another bad. Yeah, keep looking up. God's going to do what he said. You know what he said? When you see these things come to pass, lift up your eyes. Your redemption draweth nigh. Look into the hills from which cometh thy help. Thy help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. Keep looking up. He said, lift up your head. Look up. He encouraged him to pick his head up. We see the divine revelation followed by the human response and the divine assurance. 
And then we see the human acceptance. You know what it all boils down to? Just accepting it. That's what verse 6 is. And there's a, verse 6 is loaded. And we're not going to touch it tonight, but we'll touch it. He said, and he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. You know what the basic principle is? Abraham just believed in the Lord. You know what you got to do? You just got to believe God. I believe God. You know what Paul said about that? He came out of that, uh, in Acts 27, that great darkness and that shipwreck and that, the waves and everything going on before the shipwreck, excuse me. He said, I believe God. It's going to be just like he said it was going to be. You know what? I believe God. It's going to be just like he said. Let me read you this in closing. This comes from Thomas Griffith. Griffith Thomas. Might be kin to Brother Jeff somewhere down the line, amen. Because he's a smart guy. Brother Jeff's a smart guy, you know. You can pick out the smart people, you know. Got all their brains up there. Amen. The Bible says this passage is noteworthy for its first occurrences of remarkable and sequential, well-known words and phrases. We looked at some of them. The word of the Lord came, remember? Fear not, believed, counted righteousness. It is hardly too much to say that all subsequent occurrences of these words and phrases find their key in their meaning here. There's four things he said. Number one, we see the possibility of spiritual despondency. It's possible that you can get despondent. After a battle, after a war, Abraham was despondent. It's possible that if Abraham could get like that, we all can get like that. And you need to be reassured of the Lord. He says this about the possibility of spiritual despondence. This is a well-known fact in the life of, a belie of the believer. It is often due to a threefold strain, which is partly physical, partly emotional, and partly spiritual. Things go on in our lives. Great experiences make their mark upon us and by reason of the frailty of our nature, we cannot always stand upright. At any rate, we do not. There's the spiritual despondency. God knows our frames are nothing but dust and every once in a while, we get weak, just as Abraham did. Number two, we see not only the possibility of spiritual despondency, but we see the pearl of the spiritual disheartenment. There's a pearl of it. There's something that could badly happen from spiritual disheartenment. We may explain, but we can hardly excuse spiritual depression. And it is often used of Satan to lead us away from God into the paths of spiritual despair. Even though we never, can, never reach despair, our depression may easily bring discredit upon the name of God. Here lies one of the most serious elements of the pearl. You can get to the point where you say, well, does God really care? Is he going to do anything? Spiritual disheartenment. It's a pearl. P-E-R-I-L, not a pearl like something great. Number three, the protection against spiritual discouragement. What's the protection? This is found first in God's continuous revelation of himself. The word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. God keeps showing up. Hey, like he did Elijah. Out there, you know. Took him out there and fed him by the ra ravens. And the, the food, the, 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 the water drew up, drove up. And the ravens quit coming. And he took him out of that woman's house. And the, and the barrels drew up. But the word of the Lord keeps coming. The word of the Lord keeps showing up. Hey, God knows what we need. The protection against spiritual discouragement. This is, first, this is found first in God's continuous revelation of himself to our hearts. We need God to continue to reveal himself. And then our continued response and wholehearted trust and confidence maintaining through prayer and fellowship with the word of God. God's truth, God's truth and our trust. This is true. We need to trust it. He says this, his grace, his grace, our faith. These are correlative facts and will ever protect the soul. And number four, the preciousness of spiritual discipline. God delays to Abraham were not denials. It had been ten years. No seed. Abraham even said, Abraham even said it. Hey, only one of God's is Eleazar. God's delays is not God's denial. It might not have happened yet, but rest assured, God's going to do what he said he's going to do. 
Don't get in despair when he's delaying. They, they were intended to bring him near to God and to lead him to depend more upon the giver than on his gifts. Man, ain't that good? God delayed here. Why does God delay sometimes? God wants us to depend more on the giver than the gift. You know what God wants you to do? Just fall in love with him. But what about my son? But what about my situation? What about my health? What about my finances? What about my marriage? What about my children? God says, I just want you to love me. Depend more upon the giver than on the gifts. Not what God gives so much as what he is, is the foundation and source of spiritual life, power, and progress. He said, give me thine heart. For I deal with the issues of life. Do you know if you give God your heart and fall in love with God, the things of this old world, the old songwriter says, go strangely dim. The more you love the Lord, the more all these things that are real things in our life really just don't that much matter. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Assurance. The seed stars. You know what? God's got stars for you. He just wants you to lift your head up and see them. Trust Him. God's spoken to your heart tonight. Why don't you come? Maybe you needed some assurance. Maybe you needed some encouragement. Maybe you know someone else that needs it. How about pray for someone else? Maybe you want to just thank God for being God. Thank Him for loving you. Even though there's doubts, ask Him to keep guiding you. Why don't you come? Anything going on in your heart, anything God spoke to you about, somebody else you maybe want to pray for, don't shun away your opportunity. Don't stop altar. And we stop the altar time in our lives, you rest assured our lives are going the wrong direction. Maybe, maybe you just need to come like Abram tonight and say, Lord, uh, I know you promised, but it just ain't looking too good right now. This ain't the way I imagined it to happen. Kind of like those men after the crucifixion of the Lord and they're walking around the, down the road of Emmaus, this couple there, or whoever they were, men and women, two men, whatever. It just didn't seem as turned out the way they expected it to be. We thought that, you know, he'd come and set up the kingdom and, man, he's dead and we don't know what's going on. Maybe your life's like that. It's just like, I just don't know what's going on. God knows what he's doing. He can come with that assurance. Just believe the Lord. The Bible said, and he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. That righteousness is connected with that assurance, Isaiah said. Amen. Brother Ted, let's sing a verse or something, Brother Ted. Come on, everybody stand. We're going to sing a verse and go out that way. We'll figure out something. We'll wing it, man. Anybody got a song on your heart? We'll sing it if you got one on your heart. Huh?
service tomorrow night, 5 o'clock. Anybody interested in heading down to the revival or up to the revival of Tanaka? Friday, we'll be taking a big bus. We'll try to fill her up. Drive her out. Amen. Get the car to drive her. Amen. Can you drive, Miss Lynette? Good job. Miss Lynette can. Miss Lynette says to drive, he can drive. Amen. Anything else? Don't get Sunday. Invite somebody to church. Anybody interested in changing those blades? Pray about tonight's prayer room. Keep us in your prayers. Keep lifting people up to the Lord. Miss Jennifer may mention tonight's prayer room that she's got. She has a box the other day. What's the result back in school? What's the good results on that? Got to do some stuff. These boys traveling back home from up there in Shelby tonight. Brother Steve. Thank you. 